Item number SCP-6193, Security Level 3, Containment Class Euclid, Disruption Class Kenick, Risk Class Caution. Special Containment Procedures. All instances of SCP-6193 are to be stored in a standard large biological containment cell at Site-233. Each instance is to be fed a modified standard small omnivore diet with all plant matter being sourced directly from herbs and roots in Bavarian forests. A joint biological folkloric study is to be performed by the Cryptozoology Department and the Department of Mythology and Folkloristics. Changes in the behavior of any SCP-6193 instance is to be reported to the head researcher of SCP-6193 any new instances of SCP-6193 reported in Bavaria are to be captured and contained using procedure Artemis 78. As information of SCP-6193 is widely available knowledge, SCP-6193 is instead to be portrayed as a hoax created by the Bavarian locals to trick unsuspecting travelers. Description SCP-6193 is a designation for six chimeric entities originally located in the German state of Bavaria. SCP-6193 is currently known as the Verpittinger. When a human being comes into contact with any instance of SCP-6193, large patches of hair will sprout near the area of contact. SCP-6193 instances are typically docile and generally avoid human contact outside of human personnel that are romantically uninvolved. Three distinct versions of SCP-6193 exist. SCP-6193-A, B, and C. SCP-6193-A's body visually resembles a lepus europeus. European hair. However, SCP-6193-A contains many features not typically present in European hairs, including wings belonging to a codice codonyx, common quail, and is similar to that of a male Cabolus cabolus, roe deer, long sharpened canine teeth, the back legs and feet of a Sumateria mollissima, elder duck, Scent gland similar to that of a Spinogale Pretorius, Eastern Spotted Skunk, located underneath the tail. Of note is that S. Pretorius is not native to Bavaria. SCP 6193b instances will all appear to be primarily bipedal porpoise porpoise with foxes with white fur. All instances of SCP 6193b have the bill and facial structures, with the exception of the ears, of a Sumateria mollissima. SCP-6193-B instances also have small horn-like structures on their heads, not representative of any known species. The singular SCP-6193-C instance contained by the foundation has a long quadrupedal form, similar to that of a Mortis Mortis, European Pine Mon, covered in the feathers of a Pheasantus calculus, common pheasant. The face of SCP-6193 is avian in structure, with an augur similar to that of a Mortis. SCP-6193's tail is that of a Chris of a Conus Asonis, domestic donkey unlike the rest of the body. Addendum CQ-193-1 Discovery and Analysis Knowledge of SCP-6193 dates back to approximately 1982 when Foundation researcher Lucas Schmidt reported seeing one in his home state of Bavaria due to SCP-6193's then unknown anomalous properties, SCP-6193 was unable to be captured and remained uncontained. However, 
due to increased reported sightings of SCP-6193 in 2011, a joint initiative between the Cryptozoology Department and the Department of Mythology and Folkloristics was formed. The following transcript is an innated folkloristic cryptozoological analysis of a Bavarian folktale about SCP-6193. In the forest of Bavaria, a roebuck and a hare mate, thus birthing the first Roperdinger. Luckily, not a literal mating, as this would be biologically impossible. Dr. Vifon. This could, however, imply that SCP 6183A was created intentionally by something based on a roe deer and a hare. Dr. Howitz. Their union inspired many other creatures do so as well, a fox and a duck, and a pheasant and a pinemon. Yet again, likely not literal. Dr. Vifan. This could mean that whatever created SCP-6193-A found it to be a success and created more B and C. Dr. Howards. The Vobradingers have lived in the secluded woodland ever since, feeding on its plants and insects, and only showing themselves to certain people. This shows an omnivorous diet, meaning, at least in the case of A and C, a modified digestive system. Dr. Vivan. Of note is them only showing themselves for certain people. This would imply some sort of precognition or sixth sense, Dr. Howard. If you wish to summon a Vobendinger, an attractive maiden must enter the woods accompanied by a man during the full moon. If the Vobendinger deems the man right, it will reveal itself two to two. This could show some possible cosmetically by SCP-6193 as we know they're active in the daytime. Dr. Vivan. Currently, we don't know how the Vobendinger deems the man right. But it's implied to do with romantic compatibility. While we don't understand the significance of these details yet, they work, as demonstrated by procedure Artemis 78, detailed below. Dr. Howitz. Addendum 61932, Procedure Artemis 78. Materials. One security clearance level 3 personnel identifying as female and is not currently in a romantic relationship. Hereafter referred to as Maiden. One security clearance level 2 personnel identifying as a man, that has a knowledge of the Bavarian woodlands and is found to be romantically appealing to the Maiden. Thereafter referred to as Man. One wax candlestick located inside of a brass candlestick holder Hereafter referred to as candle. One large burlap sack. Hereafter referred to as sack. One small piece of wood. Approximately one meter in length. And no more than ten centimeters in diameter. Hereafter referred to as stick. One medium sized shovel. With a head composed primarily of steel. Hereafter referred to as spade. One. On the date of the full moon, the man and the maiden are to go out into the woods near the sighting of SCP-6193, equipped with the candle, sack, stick, and spade. 2. The man is to lead the maiden into a clearing, no less than 50 meters from the wood line. 3. The maiden is then to place the sack on the ground and place the stick in such a position so that it holds the sack upright. 4. The maiden is then to light the candle and place it within the sack. 5. At this point, an instance of SCP-6193 may or may not appear. If it does not, the procedure is to be terminated and retried next full moon, using a different maiden and or man. 6. If an instance of SCP-6193 does appear, the man is to wait until SCP-6193 enters the sack. Upon this happening, the man will drive the instance into the sack using the spade, 
7. The maiden is then to tie up the bag and carry SCP-6193 into Foundation custody. Addendum 6193-3 Note On April 30th, 2002, a note appeared in SCP-6193's enclosure overnight. Security footage in the enclosure found no irregularities until 2346. Then an unidentified figure entered and left a note. It is unknown how the figure entered the enclosure as the cameras outside of SCP-6193's enclosure had unexpectedly stopped working at this time. The note left has been recorded below. So this is where these ended up. Thank you for taking care of them, the taxidermist.